In the last tutorial, I went over how to create objects within 3ds Max the same way uh, we do in Maya and any other software really. Uh, so now I want to go over, uh, let me delete this one, we go over how to edit our object and where to find the tools that we normally use within Maya. Uh, okay. So first things first, if you want this to go back to the origin, uh, if you remember in Maya, you can set the absolute transform. It's usually uh, found at the top. Uh, this Max, as you can see here, we also have that down here. So we can set this back to zero if you want our object to go back to the origin. Okay, and there we have it. Again, it's just setting to our absolute transform. All right, so now we have going Let's go over how to find our most favorite tools for modeling. So in 3ds Max, it's slightly different than Maya when it comes to uh, editing your object. As you may know, in Maya, you can just create an object and right away start editing that object. But if you notice in 3ds Max, uh, if you like, if you right mouse click, there's no such thing as select faces, uh, vertices, and edges. Uh, and that's not here not because it wouldn't be here but it's not here because uh, we haven't set up our object uh, to work that way to be editable so we have to make our object so that we can edit it all right so how do we do that we have to go to our modify menu so every time you are editing your object you want to make sure you are in the modify menu from here you can again you can still have the option to rename your object and give it a different color all right, and you can still set the pattern parameters of the object from here. All right, so how do we set that up so that we can actually uh, edit our objects? Uh, you can do so by right mouse clicking. You convert it to an editable poly. Notice that there's an editable, editable mesh and poly. Uh, from what I found, the differences are that the editable mesh was like the old way of editing objects in Max, like in older versions, that was the the only way to do so. And then they brought the editable poly option, which pretty much give you gives you more options to edit your object. So almost always you're just going to be working with an editable poly as opposed to editable mesh because the editable poly gives you more options to work with. So you can do so from here or you can add it as a modifier. If you do it as a modifier, you can set it to, it should be under editable poly right here. So what, edit, for, what the modifier list adds, it adds it on top uh, as a history type thing. Think of the modifier here as a history type thing from Maya. Uh, although I would say the uh, modifier list in Max is a bit more powerful than the than just the history Maya because in Maya you usually just stacking up history but most of the time you really can't do anything with it whereas in Max it gives you more options to work with so let's just go ahead it doesn't really matter in this case if you do it as the modifier list or just right away convert it from here so I'm just gonna hold down right click Actually, you don't have to hold it down, it's just right click once. Right click, right click once and go to convert to editable poly. And right away, you can see number one, it switches here to editable poly. Uh, if we had added it as a modifier, our box would still be on the bottom, which means we can still uh, change the parameters of the box if we wanted to. At this point, we really can't. We have to scale it in the object level here but anyway so as you can see now we get a few more options here to work with and this means that our object is now ready for us to edit which is why it's called editable so if you open our menu here our list as always you have the vertex just like Maya and edges and uh, borders uh, that's something that we don't have in Maya, at least to my knowledge. Uh, basically, border, it's, uh, can't select anything right now because we don't have a border. But if I deleted one of the faces here, uh, we will have a border to select. It just makes it easier to select open areas. Uh, we have polygons, which is uh, the same as faces from Maya. So if you 
used to the war faces, I'll just get used to the war polygons, it's the same thing. And then the element, uh, that's like selecting the whole thing. But uh, selecting the whole thing, the whole thing as faces. Okay. And if you ever want to deselect your objects, you can see here I not, can't deselect it. Even if I go to element, I still can't deselect it. To deselect it, you have to click where it says edit or poly, and then not click away. Okay. So right that's right. Okay. So as always, just like my, you can uh, uh, right mouse click, and from here you can select your faces, border, edge, and vertex. Uh, obviously, you can use them these a lot, so just use it just as Maya. And not only that, you get a few more options here, just as the collapse and attach and so on. All right. So first, uh, let's go over. So let's go over some of the uh, modeling tools that we use too from Maya. Uh, let's start with the extrude tool, okay? Which you will know what it does. So notice that uh, if I come here to the menu, usually uh, the menu is going to show uh, the most useful tools or all the tools that you can actually use for this object. So I'm looking for the extrude tool and it's not really showing up. Uh, the reason for that is because I'm still in the object mode. I want to make sure I switch to, let's say, polygon. And now if we scroll down, there it is. It's the extrude. So usually, if you when you switch between vertex, uh, polygon, and edges, some of the uh, options here are slightly different sometimes. Okay? And sometimes they also behave differently. Okay? So let me go to polygon, select the face and go to extrude. Notice that just like Maya, we have to, we can click on extrude or click the options box. Usually in Maya, when you click the options box, uh, you get an options box. But when you do so in 3ds Max, let's do that. You normally just get this little menu here, which I actually really like. And also the last uh, set for the last settings that you use. So in this case, I had it like a 10. Extrude of 10. So I just click on the arrow and you can decide how much to extrude this thing. Again, it's just like Maya. Also, we have the options to do it as. Oops. Select again. Okay. We have the option to do it as a group, as a local, normal, or by polygon. Uh, by polygon means that's when you uh, deselect where it says keep faces together in Maya. That's how you do it in Polygon. Okay, let me show you. So let's click OK. Now let me select two faces. Oops. Okay. Let's go to the extrude menu. And now I'm going to select the by polygon. Okay. Scale these. Okay, and as you can see, when you scale that, they are separate. Okay. Also, if you notice the selection to select more than one face here, we hold down control and do that. If you want to select the whole loop, just hold down shift. All right. Okay, so that's what the extrude tool does. Pretty much the same as we know uh, that it does in Maya. Uh, bevel tools right here we already know what that does the bridge tool we already know what it does okay and going over the tools that we're used to in Maya we know the collapse tools right here is the same thing it does the same thing uh, the attach tool uh, that's a bit different uh, if you're looking to combine objects that would be the attach tool so if you're looking to combine objects let me duplicate this object Also, to duplicate objects in 3ds Max, as you saw right now, uh, what you do is you go to the editable level here, hold down shift and drag, and you get this menu. You can set it to be an instance, a reference, or a copy. In this case, I just want it to be a copy. So that's pretty easy to duplicate objects. Okay, so if I want to combine objects uh, here, 
So in Maya we have the, which is under mesh combine, in Maya. In 3ds Max it's the attach tool. So you have this object, select the object that you want. Uh, if you want to keep the pivot point, select that object. Let's say I want to keep the pivot point for this object. So click on the attach tool and now select the object that you want to attach to this one. Let's attach three, okay. And then as always, uh, right mouse click to exit the tool. And as you can see now, this is one object. So pretty much works exactly like the combined tool. And it preserves the pivot point of the first object that you select. Okay, so that's the combine tool. Uh, the cut tool is like the multi cut tool in uh, Maya 2014 and 15. So that's pretty much the same tool. What else should we need to know? Uh, if you want to use the merge vertex tool from Maya, so let me go to let's go to vertex. To use the vertex tooling from Maya uh, in 3ds Max, that would be the target well. So to use that, it works exactly the same. Click, click, and we are merging the vertices here. Right mouse click to exit. It does the same thing. So that would be target well. It's the same as uh, merge vertex tool. And the merge vertex, uh, it's just the well. Or Vertices. Okay, connect uh, same as Maya. So if the vertices that we want to connect this one and this one, I prefer to do a right mouse click and just come here to our menu because the connector is always right here and we can use it there. And if you remember that we set up our commands, that our hotkeys to work just as in Maya, I can press G. So I set that up to repeat my last command. Another tool, and probably the one that we normally use the most in Maya, aside from the extrude, uh, would be the inter edge loop tool. Now, to insert an edge loop within 3ds Max, uh, you can do so with the connect component. Right, down, select that, and then connect. Oops, did I select this correctly? Okay, yeah, it's right there. So we select. So we have an edge loop there. So that's the easiest way to install an edge loop. If you want to do it more interactively, like we're used to in Maya, okay, we have to go elsewhere, which is not here. Okay, this is one of the instances where we actually go somewhere else. So to do that, okay, we have to go to make sure you're under the modeling area there. And we want to use the swift loop tool. Okay, and it even it's really nice that it shows you exactly how to use it and what keys keys to use. So I'll click that one, and as you can see, we can interactively insert an edge loop, just like we're used to in Maya. Notice though that this is an edge loop. Uh, in Maya, you can usually insert edge loops this way, even under even for planes, uh, but in 3ds Max, you can only do it for uh, three dimensional models, not just a plane. Also, speaking of planes, uh, when it comes to extruding edges, let me go ahead and select the face here, delete it. When it comes to extruding edges in 3ds Max, uh, in Maya we're used to just using the extrude tool. If we go to the extrude tool in 3ds Max, try that. It usually doesn't work very well trying to use the extrude tool for an edge in 3ds Max as we can see here. So we usually stay away from using the extrude tool for edges. If you want to extrude edges, you normally, and this is why we set up our keyboard shortcuts manually instead of just using the Maya previously in the previous lessons, uh, or else this is not going to work. So we hold down shift and drag, shift and drag, and this is pretty much how we extrude edges, which is pretty much in 3ds Max we call it extend tool rather than extruding, which can also be found under our modeling here. Uh, I believe it's on the free form, and I believe it's the stand tool. 
Okay. So that's pretty much you, you, how you extrude edges in Max instead of using the extrude tool like we're used to in Maya. Okay. So that's pretty much. Uh, I believe that's pretty much everything as far as the most useful tools that we normally use in Maya and how to find those in Max. Obviously, Max, I believe, has more tools than Maya, really useful ones as well. Uh, as you can see, some of the tools are found here, uh, some really useful ones too. The most useful ones that we used all the time are normally found under our modifier area here. So, yep, yeah, that's pretty much how to find our tools. Next time, I'm just going to show you how to change the pivot points, uh, just real quick. Okay.